Okay, so I bought this carabiner off of eBay. Um, locking screw gate carabiner. Um, just wanted to see what you get for your money off of eBay. Be curious to see how this works out. Um, here's the eBay page that I got it from. Uh, you can see my carabiner there. I paid $10.99 for it. Free shipping from La Puente, California. <clears throat> Worldwide shipping available. It says that it weighs 80 grams. It does not give me... I don't see a country of manufacture listed anywhere. But we would guess it's probably China. Um, up here at the heading, you can see it says that it's a stainless steel screw gate lock and carabiner. It is not stainless steel. It's uh, aluminum alloy of some sort. If we cruise down past the pictures, <clears throat> we can see someplace it says that this is uh, aluminum alloy, I thought. I don't remember where it says that. Someplace. Yeah, I don't see it now. Someplace it says it's aluminum alloy, but. Uh, let's see here. Was it here? Strength, gold, gray. I don't see it. I don't know. There's other. Um, sources for these. This is the one I bought. Here's one that looks to be the exact same carabiner. Um, this one is nine dollars and fifty-nine cents. It comes from Rancho Cucamonga. Um, this one says also 80 grams. This one says it's aluminum. It does not claim to be stainless steel. A lot less pictures on this one. So different people providing the same product on eBay. Um, a couple of things worth mentioning here. Let's see if I can find it. Um, yeah, so if we look at this picture... It's upside down, I know, but you see the model number here is QZA. Actually, let's go back to the one that I actually bought, um, which I think is this one. Yeah. So this is the one I actually bought, and if you look at these pictures, you can see the model number here is YAC. And I actually got the QZA, which was the other one we were just looking at. So this is a YAC015S. I got a QZA015S. I can't tell you what the difference is. Uh, could just be this one has a name stamped on it and that one doesn't. The markings are a little bit different. So let's quick go back and look. What was that? Other, uh, let's see, where was the other one I clicked on down here? No, uh, uh, yeah, no, nope, yeah, nope. I don't see it now. Oh, here's, no, that's a different gate. Anyway, let's look at this one. This is the YAC, and I got the QZA. I don't know. Different numbers. Who knows? About 10 bucks a piece. If we go to Alibaba, this one's a little bit different. It has a spring-loaded gate. Um, but I would assume the price is pretty close. They're selling for um, six, five or six dollars a piece, which is pretty cheap if you bought uh, quite a few of them. So you can get these for six dollars a piece if you bought a hundred of them or something like that. You can see down here that they are happy to put the special logo CE certificate on here for you if you want to and put any kind of markings that you would like to have on the carabiner. So 
kind of implies that uh, quality control might be a little questionable if uh, different companies seem to be here's another Alibaba page uh, how about that handsome guy uh, this page they're offering again it's, this is the same carabiner just with a spring automatic gate rather than the uh, screw gate but uh, what are they selling these for Wow, you can get them as little as ten cents a piece, or three dollars per piece. So if you could buy carabiners for three dollars a piece, let's say you bought a hundred of them, let's say you tested ten of those, and if you proof loaded the rest of them, it might be worthwhile. But I don't think you should trust uh, this source. Here's your place of origin, Guangdong, China. Uh, they'll give you as many as a hundred thousand pieces per week if you'd like. Um, let's see, laser engraving. So once again, I think they'll engrave whatever you want to see engraved on your uh, carabiner. So if we go back to uh, eBay here, and if we look at the pictures... This one doesn't have a CE mark. So let's look at the carabiner I actually bought. So here's a carabiner I actually bought. It has the CE mark here, which is the European certification mark. That doesn't mean anything. Doesn't matter where you bought it. That says that the manufacturer claims they have done the testing. It does not get verified by anybody. So the CE mark basically means nothing as far as safety goes. ASOL seems to be another brand name. PICC could be another brand name, but I think you can buy these and have them print whatever you'd like to see printed on them. AYA, MAYA, AMAYA, that's once again you can have whatever you want. A part number, again, I think. Uh, the part number is whatever you want. You know, I'm sure they'll print whatever you'd like to see on there for a part number. It says that it's 30 kilonewtons loaded properly, 8 kilonewtons loaded, uh, cross-loaded, 7 kilonewtons with the gate open. Now, one thing that bothers me about this is this little notch you see here at the bottom. Because I think this carabiner would just as happily load itself where it's supposed to be loaded here at the spine. And, or, let's say, here next to the gate. So, uh, so I think the rope would happily lay in that spot rather than over in this spot where it should lay. So... Uh, we're going to have to test. I'm going to test this this way because I think if you took a climbing fall, you'd have to assume that the rope would catch in the wrong place rather than the right place. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if I get 30 kilonewtons out of it loaded next to the gate. As far as fit and finish, it seems to work smoothly. Uh, the gate spring is reasonably strong. The screw lock works smoothly uh, definitely locks it the uh, carabiner has a key lock type structure so that's nice because it doesn't get caught on things it's nice and shiny the rivet looks nicely installed i don't see any problem with that so what we're going to do is we're going to take this down and break it okay so we have ourselves set up here with a load display. So this is thousands of pounds, hundreds of pounds, and tens of pounds. I can push on my load cell and hopefully something happens. Er, there we go. That's 30 pounds. Here we have our carabiner set up. So I have this loaded in the wrong place. Uh, next to the gate, which I think is a reasonable test for this uh, configuration of uh, carabiner. We have this hooked up to uh, a hydraulic 
pump here, a little hand hydraulic pump. And the hand hydraulic pump, this is a hollow core cylinder. Capacity is about 12 tons, so 24,000 pounds. And we have a load cell here, which is a 10,000 pound capacity. So we're going to try not to go over 10,000 pounds. So here we go. We'll close the valve on the pump. And let's see what happens. Oh, it's moving. Okay, so here's our load. Whoa, 1,000. A lot of clunking and grinding going on. 2,000. Oops, it's bending, it's very definitely bending. 3,000 pounds. Oops, look, I forgot to close the, the gate. Doggone it, I hate it when this stuff happens. So, let's lock the gate. Dum dum. I'm just here by myself, I have to think of everything. Okay, here we go. And we're back up. That's 3,000 pounds. And it's definitely... Ah! There it goes. So it broke the key lock off. Let's see. So it's still holding 1,420 pounds. 1,420 pounds. After it's broken... So that's kind of like the open gate capacity. And if we check our maximum, the peak was 3,840 pounds. 3,840 pounds. Okay, here's our carabiner after the fact. You can see the failure mode pretty clearly there. So what we recorded here was uh, 3,840 pounds, which is equal to 17.1 uh, kilonewtons. 17.1 kilonewtons, so kind of low. But again, I'm sure if I had loaded it here instead of here, which I did, I would have gotten a higher force. So I really don't like this little bump here at the bottom. This little bump seems to be an issue with me. And I think maybe I should buy some more carabiners and try them because uh, I think there might be some hope for this, but we'll have to get some higher numbers than that before we have any confidence. Okay, thanks.